Okay, so what is Acash? Uh, so effectively, Acash is a decentralized cloud computing platform. Now, if that sounds familiar, you may have heard of Amazon's version of that, which is AWS. Obviously, that is centralized. So this is a decentralized version of that. And effectively utilizing blockchain technology to provide a secure, secure and transparent platform. Sorry, I don't know where that came from. Um, for anyone that wants to either deploy or host applications that they've built. Um, the platform is highly scalable. Well, they advertise it as highly scalable, it's efficient, it's flexible. Um, let's have a look. Yep, a wide range of um, applications can be run off it, whether that be just from simple websites or to something like complex learning machines, um, models like that. It's got definitely some things going for it. And I think the absolute biggest thing that's going from it is it's built off the Cosmos blockchain. So those of you that aren't aware of Cosmos, the ticket for that is Atom. Uh, so Cosmos is all about interoperability. It's one of the biggest competitors to my favorite, Polkadot. Um, and it provides the interoperability of blockchain networks like what Polkadot um, is trying to do and it effectively allows that uh, exchange of value um, between them, which we, we covered when we talked about um, Talk about Glimmer? I can't remember, I think we did. Um, a cash network is a proof of stake um, model. So when we get to talk about what you can use their token for, one of them is staking. Um, but you can, you can earn rewards from staking, participate in network activities, governance, the usual kind of things. Um, the token, which we'll go on to talk about, is also used as a payment, as they all are. Um, okay, this is where I definitely need to, because we start to talk in... Um, some coding language here. Uh, so a decentralized marketplace for computing resources. So what do we mean by that? Well, if you've got any, um, you know, sort of, if you're using your computer, but you don't use the full capability of it, like I certainly don't, because I've got a pretty swept up computer that I just use for playing computer games. Uh, you can then use um, this network to free up or allow people to utilize your additional you know, um, RAM uh, storage space or whatever it is i did write all this down but i've gone and lost it because i'm an idiot um here we go yeah um so you can effectively um rent out one of the better term um any unused computer resources whether that be the cpu whether it be the ram whether it be storage to anybody or any bidder that particularly uh wants it or any company that necessarily wants it you can host applications in a cost effective and decentralized manner um because obviously it's off the grid and it can be spread across some multiple um computers um i think that's all i was going to say there because i've covered the highly scalable bits sorry go back to where i was into the coding side of things uh, the platform supports a wide range of programming languages this is where i have to read them because i don't know anything about all this stuff uh, java python go node.js i don't know if any of the I, i've heard of some of them but um whether or not that makes any difference, it, it doesn't necessarily, but I suppose it shows that it is um, very flexible, which is obviously what it's pushing to do, uh, accessible to uh, developers from very different backgrounds. Yeah. Yes, we want to see. Highly secure, it's got built-in end-to-end encryption, security measures to protect against attacks or against hacks and data breaches. Um, it's got a decentralized and censorship resistant infrastructure. I'm not necessarily sure what that means, but um, oh, which means, uh, applications are hosted on the network cannot be taken down or censored by any central authority. How they actually do that, I don't necessarily know. Um, talk about the native token a little bit later on. Okay, so what are, you know, as I said, biggest competitors from a centralized point of view uh, are going to be the likes of Amazon, going to be the likes of Microsoft, going to be the likes of Google, people that allow that centralized cloud storage system. And you think about it, everything that we do well, not everything. the vast majority of stuff that we do gets stored in a cloud somewhere um and by, when we think of a cloud it isn't a physical cloud is it is it someone else's computer whether that be a data bank or in this instance uh, a decentralized chain of, of of computers so you know the opportunity that acash offers i've got to say you know is is fantastic and the way things are going, the lack of trust in things like banks and governments, decentralized, you know, DeFi and decentralized um, 
platforms, I think will have their day in the sun again. I really do. Uh, and so that does provide a good opportunity for, for Acash uh, to, to you know, strive or, or take advantage of that. Um, the website itself, I've got to be honest, I'm not a fan of this website. And the reason I'm not a fan of this website, which I'll go into a little bit later on, is it lacks information. Um, what's more annoying is that they actually updated the website in January of this year. Now, the prior version of the website had a lot more bars on it and a lot more information. And what's quite annoying is because I've seen screenshots of it, I can take the web page. If I want to find the roadmap, there is no roadmap on this website anymore. It's gone. If I want to find the white paper, that code there is what it should have been before January 2023. It's not there anymore. You try and type that into the search. It doesn't recognize the words like tokenomics, roadmap, white paper. And for me, especially when I'm trying to learn about a new um, token, if I can't find that information easily, it is a bit of a red flag for me. Um, and so I do worry about that. In terms of the rest of the website, I mean, yeah, the information's there. It's not particularly eye-catchy. It feels quite heavy on the eyes to read through a lot of that stuff. But it doesn't seem to be updated a lot. That's what worries me is we've got this blog section here. But if we go to like say team, for example, I can't find who's in the team. I know the CEO is because he appears on YouTube a lot. I couldn't tell you anyone else about the team. Is it not there? So the last update was May 4th, 2022, you know, and then before that, and we go to other, you know, sort of things. Again, we go into test nets, last update, April, 2022. Product, I mean, November, 2022. We'll get on six months before people are actually adding to this. And so for someone that is, you know, focusing on people using a cloudless, uh, sorry, a cloud-based system, uh, focusing on, you know, driving that traffic through the internet, I would expect their website to be very swept up and it isn't. Document section, again, it just feels like every single white paper I've ever written. Right? If any of you ever got into reading the DAOs back in those days, this was the format it was in. I find this read very difficult on the eyes. Okay, I could put it into night mode and I get that, but... Again, it's just heavy, very heavy to, to read. So in terms of a website, I'm not, not a huge fan of that, unfortunately. Um, let's have a look at where we are in terms of price. Now, this is not Acash's fault, but the information provided between CoinMarketCap, CoinGecko, and uh, Masari is, is woefully different. And so whilst I am on the coin market cap initially, I would encourage any of you to use CoinGecko for this. Um, but we can see here it's around about, you know, just under 500 in terms of where the token is. It's currently at about 30 cents a token with an all time high privacy of around about $7. So this has had a hell of a fall from grace um, and, you know, potential, uh, huge potential for that to um, up. Now it's been around a while, so it was launched in 2019. Um, so it's seen the ball run into, sorry, it says 2020 there, but that's 2021. Uh, so this is 2020 launching the end of 2020 and it's seen the ball run in 2021. It's seen the, the, the blow off top, although it didn't quite get there, but that's no slight against it because we had the same issue with most altcoins, um, in that November run up as well. And then, you know, from May, it's just been, you know, 40 cents down to 20 18 cents it's just been in that range uh and obviously it's seen a bit of a pump there market cap's only 35 uh actually i'm going to take it off this one because i don't think that's correct market cap is 63 uh million dollars uh it's got a circulating supply of 210 tokens and if you look yeah it says 113 that's a hell of a difference so that's why i've gone with with coin gecko here because i do believe this is right if 24 hour trading volume of only 1.3 million we'll get into that in a little bit of time and it's got a max supply of 388 million tokens or a little bit over that um i'll go through all of the um competitors uh but you're right there's um there's a, there is a few competitors uh out there you can have a look at uh everything else off here i will just have a quick check if there's anything all-time high apparently it was actually eight dollars so it's a 96% drop down from there. It's got its market cap at 380 on here. That's just because it's got it as a, it's got more circulating supply. So it's obviously going to have a bigger market cap uh, to drive that through. Um, in terms of 
this is just where it is on the sari so i did i more and more do i um sort of swing towards this um markets that it's available in for me this does let it down a little bit i think the amount of markets that it is in and the size of the markets that it is in it's pretty small which is why it has in my opinion uh, a low trading volume um so we've got Qcoin, which I, I'm not slight in Qcoin. I'm, I'm happy to see that it's there because, you know, we saw in the last bull run that most small cap coins, they launch first on the likes of Qcoin because can't afford the listings on Binance. That's great. Kraken and Crypto.com, they have recently just picked those two up. So that's both, I think, January and February of this year. But the rest of them, as I say, you know, fairly small ones that we, we don't typically use. And the volume is pretty low. The biggest amount of volume is off Ascend X. I've never heard of it. Um, with just over 600,000 and then Hubie, which I have heard of. I do have an account. I just don't personally use, uh, but the rest of it outside of that very small volume. So if you're going to trade it, you're going to get a bit of slippage there. Um, in terms of its ecosystem, you know, it does have an ecosystem. Obviously we, that's what we want to see because we talk about that Acash token aside from you staking it and getting, um, interest, uh, from that. Aside from governance, it is also used as a payment method. So we actually want to see people trading in and around this. I don't necessarily have time to run through each of these different ones, but because I'm not au fait with the Cosmos network, I, you know, I haven't necessarily heard of many of these or any of them particularly. Um, so I just have to leave it to, to others to determine if these do there. But the fact that they actually have products working on that, I'll, I'll take that as a tick. Um, I don't need that. Again, the team we can't find. In terms of socials, it's got about 86,000 followers. They're fairly active within uh, their socials. In terms of Discord, um, I've joined their Discord. And uh, yeah, there, there's, I think I'm trying to find the numbers of how many there are. Can't see now. Top of my head. There's a fair few. Because I couldn't find any information on the website, I reached out on Discord and Telegram. To be fair, I did get responses within about an hour they told me to go to github i don't like using github i'll be honest they just said you can find all the information there and so whilst i know the white paper does exist because i've seen it it's not here i have it somewhere i'm gonna bring that up in a second um the fact that you can't find it on the website i just find increasingly infuriating um that stuff like that basics that aren't there and you know someone that's not particularly au fait with looking at things like github and trying to find that you know it just immediately puts me off wanting to put in the effort to try and find that information. Um, but I will persevere and there is, excuse me a second, whilst I just try and find uh, the white paper, because it is important to go over that easily. Um, pursue my journey, there it is. Okay, so here is the white paper for it's 13 pages long and it's written and, you know, as a, um, well, I like to call a, uh, a dissertation type style of things. So just fine. You know, I'd, sometimes you just have to suck that up and that's just what it is. Goes for the definitions. I got nothing necessarily wrong with that. Um, but what do I always look for when I go to tokenomics? That's what I want to know from the white paper. Yeah, I have a bit of a read about that, but I want to have a look at the tokenomics itself. It does talk about the governance and how it's going to be used uh, in terms of uh, for fees, going to be used for settlement of, of lock-ins and the reserves, how much is going to be released and how they're going to manage the weight of each of these payments, etc. Fine. But then we get to the tokenomics. And I mean, bloody hell, I honestly have no idea how they work out the tokenomics. So we talk about inflation here. I was just looking for a percentage. What is your, you know, your yearly inflation rate? Instead, I met with how other people do it and the formula that they use. And then the formula down here of how um, Acash are gonna do it. <laughs> I have no idea, honestly. Like, you know, again, it, I'm not saying that it is not 100% perfect and exactly how everybody else does it. But, and it's great that they put it out there, but I, I don't have time to, one, try and understand it, and two, plug the numbers in to work out what it's gonna be. Um, so that's kind of frustrating that that's where it is. Um, especially when you start to think about, we do want to know what emission rates are like, because 
we need to understand where they are in the cycle of releasing all of their tokens. And so Masari are pretty good at providing that information. And we can now get a little bit of an inkling of where we are with it. Um, so we had 2021. I, I, I don't believe this information is correct in here because I know that the first 100 million were given to um, you know the founders and the teams and the VCs, etc. So the first 100 million that's circulating around is locked up by them. I don't have a vesting schedule, can't find a vesting schedule for how long that's locked up for and when they're dumping it. But we can see that when it started getting live, we do have an emissions, um, but then we have these step emissions. And again, I don't know what that step emission necessarily is and how that's worked out. Maybe that's within the formula, but I then have to now take that into consideration because we're only what are we, about halfway, just over halfway of the tokens being released. Now they have been released pretty darn quickly. Don't get me wrong, to get to the halfway. But actually, when you think about it, first 100 were tied up with the 400. We've had another 100. So we've had 25% of what is available to be released, released in the last two years. Um, but I want to know what the rest of the token emissions are going to be. And, and I, you know, I can't easily find that. So that's, again, a bit disappointing. Um, in terms of you know, when I'm looking at a token, especially one I've never heard of, you know, I'll, I'll stick my hand up and I'll be like, right, I, I will run a search engine through Google, through YouTube, and through Twitter, because I need to find out what it is so I can explain to you guys. And I've got to be say, be honest that the amount of interest in terms of videos or articles um, recently about Acash is pretty limited. Now we're in a bear market, so I completely get that necessarily. It's a, you know one of twenty three thousand tokens that are out there, and it's kind of sitting middle of the range. So you know why necessarily would? But what was interesting is in the beginning of twenty twenty one, there's a lot of videos about this. You know, Coin Bureau even started talking about it. he's a big fan of Cosmos, so it came out there a few other big channels at least reference it. Uh, there's an altcoin daily um, reference within that as well. So it was good to see and it was starting to get pushed, but actually recently we're, we're not seeing any of that. And I really struggled to find any recent information on that. Now that is not discrediting the project at all. That just, you know, it means that when I watch or read any information about it, I have to take it with a grain of salt because things move on. Hence, when I was looking at videos and uh, tweets, posting pictures of the website and I actually looked at the website itself, it was completely different. So, you know, that's just for me is something that I um, just look at is, is there a particular interest? I'm not talking about moon boy interest, people shilling it. I'm just talking about people generally making videos. I don't care if it's only had five views, someone taken the time to be bothered to make a video. And unfortunately, yeah, I might be able to find 10 videos in the last six months, but compared to other th uh, projects that I look at that dwarfs, um, sorry, it doesn't dwarf. It's the opposite of that. That's tiny compared to, to the other. So is there really that interest within that? I'm not necessarily sure. Talked about the website, talked about the markets. Um, user base. I, I want to know, is this thing growing? And it's kind of hard to work out if it is growing. Um, let me just take and research. I think this is it. So I've got a bit of information on here. Average block time, six seconds, uh, which is quite interesting. But what I was hoping to see is whether or not I could see a chart to just show how many users there are. I've gone through all these settings. I couldn't necessarily find one. Again, doesn't necessarily mean um, that that's an issue. But we can see the inflation rate is approximately 8%, but that, that's actually changed from today um, because it was a little bit less than that earlier, but that could just fluctuate. The APR here is just under 12. What's interesting is that we've actually... You know, of the 211 million that's in token, it's about 143 are actually locked up. So again, it adds to that low level of liquidity compared to what's out there, uh, which is maybe why we don't have it on any real big exchanges at the moment, because obviously for it to be listed on the exchange, they need to have the tokens to be able to sell it. Uh, so, so yeah, um, I think I'll probably try and summarize it now, but in my honest opinion, this could be what I'm, I'm going to pass on this one. Um, I was going to show you its competitors, wasn't I? So let's just find that first. So if we just put it in order. So this is a shared computer one. So there it is, a cache. So we've got kudos. We've got um, render, which someone mentioned. Anchor protocol is is there as well. 
Gollum's there. I think someone mentioned that in in chat. So it's you know it's it, it's not the biggest market that's out there, but there's some pretty decent ones out there that I've certainly heard of above this one here. Doesn't necessarily mean that it is not going to be a good project. For me, I really do believe that this sector is is a big one, but right now, am I interested in it? Against, I'm trying to keep a small amount of uh, cryptos, you know, sub fifteen. Is it worth me allocating some of this? Not necessarily yet. Uh, it's been bleeding. Um, I, I think you know it's likely it'll bleed a little bit more. And if I start to see things pick up, then maybe I would get interested in it. I, I do think the sector that it's working in, I think, will be a really big sector. It's got a lot of big competition against centralized uh, versions of this. You know, as I said, three biggest companies in the world of Amazon, Google, and Microsoft pretty much are its main competitors, but they're all centralized. So, you know, I think there is definitely a shift in the narrative that could help push that along. Um, but I'm, I'm not going to be uh, investing in this one. Just, just think uh, for me personally, the risk to reward just isn't necessarily there. Um, I had some reservation straight off the bat with the website because I can't find information and that's the one thing that frustrates me because I go away from being able to understand something as much as I should do to just effectively guessing and filling in the gaps and then I'm just going with Hopium then so yeah that's where I am with that one Tommy um I, I will it's on my charts now so I'm certainly going to be watching it um but I, I'm not utilizing any remaining funds that I have at this particular moment for it I hope that was informative. I said I was going to stick to the script and I didn't. I just can't. Um, yeah. Okay. I'm going to have a drink. As always, all this information I will put on there so you can have a look at it yourself and try and digest it uh, a little bit better. I'll, I'll put some of the videos that I watched as well. A bit dated, but the CEO is very passionate about it. He obviously clearly knows his stuff. Um, he built some software that was actually bought by Google. So he's got to know what he could, he's talking about from a sort of a, this engineering kind of coding kind of point of view. Um, and that's good to see. Uh, yeah, finish my heart.